about halfway through a month in which the S&P uh, 500 and the Nasdaq could both hit record highs. Canaccord Genuity's chief market strategist Tony Dwyer joins us now. Give us his take on uh, the road ahead. Uh, all right, so do that, Tony. Uh, we just, I don't know if you heard the data as well, but you know, where, where do you stand in terms of how you see things unfolding from here over the next few months? David, I think uh, it's going to get, it's been choppy, it's going to get choppy underneath the surface. I think one of the most important things that's not talked enough about, so much of the, um, I ask myself when I get up in the morning all the time, where's the recession? I've been on a recession call for a while. You had an inversion of the yield curve that's been historic in terms of duration and extent. And bank lending last year shut down, you know, over the last 15 months. So how, how have we not gone into a recession? Most people would think that, well, you have excess savings from the pandemic, you had fiscal stimulus. But I really think it's, a, it's the private credit market that has held up companies that would have ordinarily not had access to capital. So the question becomes, does that just push out a recession? Or does that eliminate one or avert one? And I think it pushes it out. So I think as we get some weaker economic data, especially on the employment front over the course of the next few months, that may put a little bit of pressure on stocks. But ultimately, it should turn out to be a pretty good year when the Fed starts to really ease. Uh, you know, Tony, we've had this conversation with you a bit in the past as well. Sarah put a chart up at the beginning of the show just showing the outperformance of those six mega cap stocks versus the rest yeah. of the market. And we've talked so often for, over these first two and a half months of the year about a broadening. What are your expectations in terms of that, whether it continues and what it means for the overall performance of the S&P as the year moves ahead? Why aren't we famous for coming out and talking about the broadening and how it's great right at the peak of the broadening? So ultimately, David, is now how is um, what differentiates a trade versus uh, a longer duration sustainable advance in that relative performance of small and the equal weighted S&P? And ultimately, like everything else, it comes down to earnings. I think what most people don't realize is that if you exclude the MAG-7, from 2023 earnings, they were actually down 1.2%, according to T.J. Dillon uh, at LSEG Ibis. So when, when you actually look at why the mega cap stocks have gotten such a big percentage of the gain over the last 15 months, it's because they've that's where all the earnings growth has been. Even in the current quarter, if you exclude, meaning Q1, if you exclude the MAG-7, you're still in a negative earnings growth environment. So what creates that sustainable advance versus a trade, I call it an owner versus a rental of stocks. What creates that relative performance sustainability is going to be evening out of earnings growth. And that comes to us in Q, starting really in Q4. So that's what I think that earlier this year, maybe the market was sniffing out that that's going to happen. I think it's generational. I don't think it's going to be one of those quick trades when you get that earnings uh, performance coming in. Anytime you've had the top 10 stocks is such a big percentage of the market cap yeah. of the S&P 500, you've gone into a years of relative uh, decline of the mega cap. Tony, just because you just threw out the recession word and expect one, where where do you see it? First of all, it's not in the market, so I think you have to defend it a little bit. It's not in the economic data sure. as well, certainly not consensus. So where do you see signs of recession? Well, it's been wrong. And, and again, Sarah, that's why I brought in the idea of, of why hasn't it happened when it's happened every other time. The capital market shut down, the bank lending shut down, the money supply went negative for the first time in history. There had to be a source of capital for companies to have access to money when you couldn't get it anywhere else. And for the first time in history, we have private credit at bigger than the high yield market, bigger than the levered loan market at 1.7 to 1.8 trillion. So. Why do I think we're going to get it now? Number one, we've been in a recession in the manufacturing sector. What most people don't know, Sarah, is that there's something called the initiation survey rate. We had a $176,000 uh, job reduction in the estimate in the last two months at the latest payroll data. Prior to the pandemic, if I reached out to CNBC and said, how many people are you hiring? How many people are you firing? Historically, 70% of companies would respond quickly enough to put it in the initial number. It's called the initiation survey rate. Post-pandemic, that's dropped to 40. In January of this year, according to the BLS, it was 27%. So we have widely incomplete data. The vast majority of the time in the last year, it's been negatively revised. I mean, how right. many people like me came on TV a, a, a month ago and said the Fed may not even cut rates because employment was up 335,000 jobs? 
only to be revised significantly lower. So, so I think Tony, it's going to come from a weaker employment picture. The longer that the Fed stays yeah. higher, the higher for longer, the steeper the debt cliff comes when it's time to roll it over.